Maya is a witch. She's been looking for her missing cat all morning. Can you help her? The cat is over here. Maya is heading to her best friend, Sandra. She brings her something delicious. It looks square from the outside, but it looks round when opened. Also, it looks like a triangle when taken out. Can you guess the name of the food? It's a pizza. On the way, Maya decides to take a new route. She finds herself in the middle of an unfamiliar street and sees some cute little houses. All except two are blue. Also, all except two houses are red and all except two are purple. Can you figure out how many houses of each color are present on that street? Let's focus on the first two statements. We can fairly assume that two houses are not red and two houses are not blue. Now, one of those houses that are not red can be blue. Similarly, one of the non-blue houses can be red. If we remember the third statement that all except two houses are purple, we can conclude that the street has only one red, one blue, and one purple house. Maya enters Sandra's kitchen. Can you count the exact number of frogs in this location? Thirteen. This one is just a picture. Sandra shows Maya two pictures of her sisters. Ella lives alone, while Elsa lives with her fiancé. Can you guess which one is Elsa? It's the first lady. She has two towels in her bathroom, while Ella only has one. Maya asks Sandra, can you make the sum of 60 by using three times the same number? Sandra replies, easy, 20 plus 20 plus 20. But there's one more way to do so. Can you figure it out? The other way is 55 plus 5. Maya needs help in her magic shop, so she invites Harry for a job interview. When Harry arrives, he looks pretty nervous, so Maya offers him some hot coffee. She puts the cup in front of him and asks, what's before you? Harry replies, tea. After hearing the answer, Maya hires this candidate immediately. Can you guess why? If the answer was coffee, Maya would never have asked such an easy question. She meant the alphabet U, the letter T, comes before a U. That's why Maya is impressed by Harry's answer. Harry shows Maya three cards from a standard deck face down. He says, to the left of the queen, there are one or two jacks. To the right of the jack are one or two jacks. To the right of the club, there are one or two diamonds. To the left of the diamond, are one or two diamonds. Can you guess what the three cards are? The Jack of Clubs, Jack of Diamonds, and Queen of Diamonds, or Jack of Diamonds, Jack of Clubs, and Queen of Diamonds. Maya tells Harry, let me show you some Focus Pocus too. I can make the number one disappear by adding something to it. Can you guess how? She needs to add a letter G before one and it will be gone. Simple. Maya leaves her magic shop to get some lunch. In a while, she returns and finds Harry unconscious on the floor in the storage room. She calls doctors and questions three persons standing nearby. 
Billy says, I was checking out the shelf with love potions when I heard weird noises from the storage. But I didn't bother. I thought Harry just dropped some stuff. Scarlet says, I came here to buy the missing ingredient for my revenge potion. I don't have time for this. And Bella says, I came here for red candles, but the seller was absent. Can you guess what happened here? Take a look at Scarlet's recipe. The missing ingredient is a spider. Harry got bitten by a venomous spider when he tried to get it out of this broken jar. There's a tiny bite on his right arm. Next Sunday, Meyer receives a call from Sandra at 7 a.m. Sandra is very excited because she had found a recipe for an immortality potion in her library. Maya arrives at Sandra's house at 10 a.m. and finds her lying unconscious on the floor. All her books are gone. Maya calls the police. The detective arrives immediately and questions three suspects. Sandra's husband, Frank, says, I'm a school teacher. I haven't been home all morning because I had four classes on my schedule. Shelly, the housekeeper, says, I had a day off and spent time with my boyfriend. And Bob, the gardener, says, I've been planting roses in the backyard all morning. I haven't even entered the house yet. After hearing all three stories, the detective knows exactly who's a liar. What about you? Frank is lying. He said he'd been at school, but schools are closed on Sundays. Thankfully, Maya saved a screenshot with the recipe on her phone. Now she's making a potion for Sandra. Unfortunately, the last four ingredients in the recipe are encoded. Here's the first one. It's a fruit that is always sad. Can you figure it out? It's a blueberry. Also, she needs to add something that has an ear but cannot hear. Any ideas what it might be? Corn. The next one is a cheese that is made backward. Eat them. In the final ingredient is a room that you can eat. Maya needs to add a mushroom. Maya is visiting Sandra in the hospital. She gives her the magic potion and Sandra gets well immediately. On the way back, Maya meets three doctors in the lobby, but only one of them isn't fake. Can you guess who? The first doctor is wearing a dirty coat but it doesn't prove that he's a fake. Meanwhile, this handsome bearded doctor has a picture of a woman on his badge, which means that he had stolen someone else's pass. As for the third person, she's wearing colorful nail extensions, which is against common sanitary rules, so she can't be a doctor. Maya runs away from the imposters and finds herself in a creepy abandoned part of the hospital. Finally, she sees three doors, but each door is hiding some danger. There's a werewolf hiding behind the first door. There's a wicked wizard waiting for Maya behind the second door. And there's a magical portal leading to a black hole behind the third door. Can you help Maya choose the safest option to escape? She should choose the first door. Look out the window. It's a new moon. Werewolves are only dangerous on a full moon. Maya escapes successfully and calls her sister Wendy who lives in a village. Wendy says, come over and we'll figure it out. Maya boards a train. Maya notices these four passengers. One of them is a famous thief. Can you guess who?
This elegant lady is a thief. The first guy is reading about her crimes in his newspaper. Finally, Maya arrives at Wendy's house. She spots one odd detail about this place right away. Can you see it too? It's too risky to leave the iron in such a dangerous position. Maya enters the living room and spots two weird details. What about you? Take a closer look at the calendar. There's no June 31st. Also, this chair only has three legs. Maya starts to suspect that Wendy is under a spell. To test her logical thinking, she offers her this riddle. There are eight brothers that look alike. They're considered to be weak, yet they protect the king in every battle. If they move ahead, they never turn back. Who are they? Wendy failed to crack this riddle. What about you? The eight brothers are pawns in the chess game. After a long search, Maya finds a spell that will break all black magic, but it's locked in this safe that requires a seven digit code. Can you help Maya open the safe? There are exactly seven books on the shelf above the safe. It's a hint. Each book has a Roman numeral on its spine. So, the code is 2113542. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side. Suddenly, somebody pushed Stacy into the water. Down in the Sea Kingdom, Stacy met Neptune. He was sitting on his throne, surrounded by three mermaids. Neptune asked Stacy to return the pearl necklace to his wife. He had recently lost it, and Luke found the necklace on the shore. Can you guess which mermaid is Neptune's wife? The third one. She's the only one who's wearing an engagement ring. Another working day at the chocolate factory. Jason decided to prank Freddy and covered a raw chicken egg with a layer of chocolate. Then he wrapped it and put it among real chocolate eggs on a tray. When Jason brought the chocolate eggs, Freddy spotted the fake one immediately. Can you figure out how? The real chocolate eggs are hollow inside, so they were rolling all over the tray when Jason was walking. But the raw egg is heavier, and it didn't move much. Mm. What about the dressing room? Any odd details? These hairy clawed paws can't belong to a human. Next, Bella decided to visit a hairdresser. The manager asked her to wait for 20 minutes. Bella took a seat in the lobby and accidentally fell asleep. When she woke up, she saw that someone had cut her long, beautiful hair. She got furious and questioned three suspects. Maya said that she had been busy with another customer. She didn't see what was going on in the lobby. Rick said that he had been eating his lunch outdoors. And Sally said, Who do you think I am? I don't steal hair. That's ridiculous. Who is lying? Both Maya and Sally had some cut hair on their clothes, but that doesn't prove their guilt. But Rick's lunchbox is full of food, which means he was busy with something else during his lunch break. Very suspicious. Hmm. Bella's evening dress was too long and classy. She couldn't go to the concert hall by subway. So the hostel manager, Fred, offered Bella to give her a ride if she cracked his tricky riddle. I have a neck and no head. Two arms, but no hands. I'm with you at school, I'm with you at work. What am I? The correct answer is a shirt. 
During a break, Bella went outside to get some fresh air. She enjoyed the evening along with the other guests. Suddenly, a street dealer offered Bella a diamond necklace for $20. What? She agreed right away and put the necklace on. Okay. Soon, three guests came over to Bella to claim the necklace. Pam said, How dare you! This necklace has been in my family for ages. I lost it in the ladies' room. Diana said, This piece looks very similar to my necklace. Someone stole it as I was moving through the crowd today. In any case, my jewelry collection is insured. And Sheila said, I noticed that the necklace was gone after visiting the buffet on the sixth floor. Can you help Bella return the necklace to its real owner? The necklace belongs to Diana. The concert hall doesn't have six floors. Pam and the street dealer have similar tattoos on their arms, so they must be scammers working together. After the performance, Letitia invited Bella to the after party, where Bella met Tyler. He claimed he was a famous violinist and showed Bella some pictures proving his luxurious lifestyle. But Bella realized that he was just a wannabe very soon. How did she understand it? Take a look at the trees in this picture. It's obvious that the wind is blowing to the right. Meanwhile, Tyler's hair seems to be swept to the left. The picture has been photoshopped. The next morning, Bella went to buy some groceries. She didn't have much cash, so she bought only two items, cheese and bread, and paid $1.10 in total. The cheese cost $1 more than the bread. How much did the bread cost? The most obvious answer would be that the bread cost 10 cents. But if the bread cost 10 cents and the price of the cheese was $1 higher than that of the bread, the cheese would cost $1.10. And the total, in this case, would be $1.20. The correct answer is that the bread costs 5 cents and the cheese costs $1.05. This indeed makes a total of $1.10. Does that make sense? I mean, cents? Freddy decided to pay Jason back. He dressed up as a ghost to scare him. But suddenly, several real ghosts appeared in the room. Can you figure out which of these ghosts is Freddy? This guy over there! He's the only ghost who is not transparent at all. One evening, the factory was celebrating its anniversary. The management organized a party. All employees participated in a karaoke competition. Most of them all sang incredibly well and received gifts and flowers. But only two of the best singers, Nancy and Betsy, made it to the final. They prepared to face each other in one more round. But suddenly, Betsy fell to the floor, unconscious. Doctors claimed that she had been poisoned. But all the participants of the competition had eaten exactly the same food. Besides, the police checked the dishes, and they were okay. Can you guess what happened? Someone poisoned Betsy's flowers. Next day, Freddy came to work as usual. He looked around and exclaimed, Wait a minute! Who's brought a cat to the chocolate factory? No pets are allowed here. Can you see any animals? Here it is! The cat got scared and ran away to another room. Freddy followed it. Can you spot the cat now? It's hiding over there. And again, Freddy failed to catch the cat. It ran out of the building and hid in the garden. Can you help the guy find the cat? The poor animal is over there. Freddy caught the cat and found a small note attached to its collar. It had contact information. Freddy called the cat owner, but no one answered the phone. So, after work, Freddy took the cat and went to the address mentioned in the note. It was a creepy castle. The door was locked and required a password. 
Can you help Freddy crack the code using this hint? The password is rainbow. A gloomy old man greeted Freddy inside the castle. Freddy expected that he would thank him for bringing the cat back. But the old man began to laugh evilly and locked all the ways out. Then he said, If you manage to complete three tasks I give you, you will get one million dollars. But if you fail, you'll stay in my castle forever. Here's the first task. Help me find my glasses among all these vegetables. Can you help Freddy? Here they are. The next task from the old man was to cook a potion and do it in the correct order. He gave Freddy this recipe. Can you help the guy? First of all, you gotta put curry. Then go for blueberries to make the potion look greenish. And finally, add tomatoes to make the potion look brown. As for these vegetables, Freddy doesn't need them. And the third task is to find a book in this messy room. Can you see it? It's half hidden inside the sofa. Sam was walking in the mountains. He met a beautiful girl and spent the whole day with her. In the evening, he realized he didn't even know her name. He asked if he could take her out the next day. The girl agreed, but only if he guessed her name. Sam was upset. But luckily, the girl liked him too. She wrote something on a piece of paper. It was a hint. Can you figure out her name? Ignore the numbers and look at the letters. Together, they make up the name Regina. Sam rented a cabin on a beautiful deserted beach. He called Regina and invited her over. But she complained that she'd broken her leg. Sam offered his help and invited Regina to stay in his house until she recovered. He brought her to the cabin in his arms like a real gentleman. Yeah. Regina was hungry and asked Sam to go buy some food. When Sam returned, he saw that someone had robbed his house. Regina said she had been sleeping and hadn't seen the robbers. Sam called the police and said, I guess my new girlfriend is a thief. Why did he think so? Take a look at the cast. At first, it was on the right leg, but now it's on the left one. The police arrested Regina. They also detained three suspicious men. Jake said that he had been walking with his dog nearby. Bill said that he had been taking pictures for his blog. And Fred said he always surfed on that beach. Can you guess which of them is Regina's accomplice in the robbery? It's Bill. Take a look at his arm. He has a tattoo with Regina's name. 